Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we saw that the equation that we use to find the equation of kinematics used in the Lagrangian is really another way of writing F equals ma. And we realized that it's this portion right here, the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to position, that gives us the force in that equation. What we're going to do this time in this video is show you three examples. We've already looked at the free fall example, but just for comparison, I'll include it. And also show you simple amount motion and Coulomb's law to see that when we take the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to position, we get the force in each case. It's kind of interesting and revealing. So let's go ahead and do that again. So we're going to take the partial derivative of L with respect to X, which is equal to this. Remember that L can be written as the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy. So when we do that, we take the partial with respect to x of this quantity right here, which is 1 half mx dot minus mgx. Notice that in the first term right here, there's no x, so therefore that's simply a constant that goes away. And here, this is equal to minus mg. Since mg is the weight, minus meaning that it's pointing downward, this would then be equal to the force. So we can say that the force is equal to minus mg, realizing that g is equal to a positive 9.8 meters per second square. So again, you can see that in free fall, this term right here in this equation represents the force in the F equals ma equivalent of this representation. Now let's go ahead and try to do that with simple harmonic motion with a spring. The kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, although in, in generalized coordinates we write x dot instead of v. And the potential energy is stored in the spring as being 1 half kx squared. So what we're going to do here is take the partial derivative with respect to position of this quantity, which is 1 half mx dot squared minus 1 half kx squared. Again, the partial derivative with respect to x of this is 0. And taking the derivative here will give us, this is equal to uh, 2 times this, that's a minus k times x. Hmm, minus k times x with respect to a spring. Remember that the equation of a spring, as far as the spring constant and, and the amount of distance the spring is elongated or compressed, is equal to f equals to minus kx. In other words, this quantity here again represents the force. And finally, let's look at Coulomb's law. Here we have a large charge and a small test charge. They're both positive. The work done to place that small test charge here is equal to the potential energy, which is equal to the charge or the test charge times the potential. The potential is equal to K, KQ over R. Therefore, the kinetic energy minus the potential energy can be written as this. This again is the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, and this would be the potential energy stored in the small test charge. Now let's go ahead and take the derivative with respect to the position. So the partial with respect to position of this quantity right here, which is 1 half mx dot squared. And just a moment, since I'm going to take it with respect to x instead of r, let me go ahead and use the generalized coordinates x, where x is simply this distance right here. So let's go ahead and continue. Minus k little q big Q over x. And we take the derivative of this. Remember, this is like x to the minus 1. Take the derivative. We take the minus 1 exponent, multiply the not minus 1 here, and then subtract 1 from, from the exponent. This becomes equal to a positive k little q big Q over x squared. And then if you look at this, this is the portion of the Coulomb's law where we know that the force between any two charges is equal to k q1 q2 divided by the distance between them squared, which means that this is the exact format. This also is equal to the force. So here you can see three different examples that you're probably very familiar with. Free fall, simple harmonic motion with a spring, and Coulomb's law. In each case, when we take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to position, we get the force component of the F equals MA equivalent of this particular equation. So now you see how the Lagrangian works. This portion here gives you the force. This portion here gives you the mass times acceleration. Now, in simple examples like this, you may say, why use the Lagrangian? And you're perfectly correct in saying that. There's probably no reason to do so. We can very easily find the equations of motion just using our old-fashioned techniques. 
But when things get more complicated, we definitely want to use this technique. And so let's get familiar with the Lagrangian in some simple examples before we start tackling the more difficult ones. And that's how it's done.